Well, you guys are here on a shitty date. <laughs> Oh, just kidding. I had to make that joke. I thought that's kind of funny. Anyways, thanks so much for being here. Today we're talking about poop and how to go about your business when you live in a truck or a van or a bus or you're traveling around and you're a nomad and you gotta go. What do you do? Well, we're gonna hear from a couple different people who I've met along my travels. Uh, Carl, the owner of Nitro Gear and Axle, um, as well as Jack, um, who is preparing his truck camper to ship to Australia and travel there, as well as myself and what I do uh, when the moment arises. So let's dive on in and uh, hit you with that intro. I'll see you guys in, I don't know, like 20 seconds or something. So I want to start by saying essentially there's five ways you can go do your business outside. You can dig a hole, get a little toilet seat from Walmart or something like that. That's what I do 90% of the time. Um, the second way you can use a black water system. If your camper trailer or RV already has a toilet, well, you're already all hooked up. Um, but if you're willing to do any of those two, you probably wouldn't be watching this video. So there's three kind of mobile options that'll round out <clears throat> these full five for you. Um, the third option would be a cassette toilet, which essentially holds the waste in a separate container. You dump it out later. Uh, the fourth would be a compost toilet, which essentially separates the urine from the solids, liquids from solids. And the fifth way is a dry toilet, or some would call a wrap-on toilet. So let's hear from Carl, the owner of Nitro Gear and Axel, who is going with the compost setup. Let's see what he has to say about it. You know, I swapped it to uh, this uh, Nature's Head composting toilet, which has been awesome. It actually stinks less than uh, most regular RV toilets. And <laughs> you never have to go to the RV dump and you know, use it. At, I use it almost every weekend in the winter. I'm at some different ski area, camped in it, and never have to worry about stuff freezing and I've got heat that's plumbed into the fresh water tank so I can you know midwinter you can even take a shower and stuff like that oh nice everything's all insulated pretty well have you, you have you had any issues with water getting in it when you take a shower do you do anything no no okay cool yeah. so it's pretty well sealed and yeah that's awesome yep. yeah. yeah yeah I've heard really good things about those that's cool yeah all right, so Carl seems to love that toilet. They also run these. They're just now putting them in the Earth Cruisers. When I did the Earth Cruiser walk around, uh, Lance, the owner of Earth, Earth Cruiser, let me know that his wife actually had the idea, and he just kind of said, well, I trust you on that. And the Nature's Head compost toilet in, in there, one. it looks like. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They're getting cool. really quite popular. Our, this is our new GXP. This one is getting made here. Um, we're going to put a composting one in. I personally never used any and know nothing about it. Michelle thinks it's a good idea, so I guess we're doing it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so compost is a great way to go. The Nature's Head's about a thousand bucks. You can build your own compost toilet for under a hundred bucks for sure, maybe even like 30, 40 bucks. Essentially, all you're doing is you're separating the urine into a tank that you dump out. Um, and then the solid solid stuff goes in, you know, like a five gallon bucket or something. Um, you can add sawdust. There's all sorts of different things to soak it up, if you will. And apparently the smell isn't too bad with a compost toilet. It's more of an earthy kind of smell and like smells like dirt rather than what you may think. Um, so the compost toilet is a great route, something I wouldn't be opposed to at all. Um, but let's see what Jack has to say about the dry toilets. Um, that part's our bathroom and indoor shower. Uh, so we chose to forego uh, a typical toilet. So we went with the wrap-on style toilet. And it, it uh, for us, it was the right choice. I know other people like cassette toilets. We'd had a, a cassette toilet in the past and we just weren't a fan of it. And we've had normal black tanks in our other RVs. and. Uh, because when you get into other countries there's not a lot of places to dump black tanks or any places to dump black tanks so you're kind of left with 
one or the other choices. So for us, this, this was the choice we made, and so far we've been very happy with it. Yeah, I, I think this would be way better than a cassette toilet. Yeah. It's all just dry, right? And it's very sanitary. Yeah. It comes out in a, you know, everything you do is put into a plastic bag and you're not touching anything icky or whatever. It's it's very, very sanitary, mm -hmm. which is another nice thing. And no odor. Yeah. Yeah, that's Which cool. is fantastic. So the dry toilet seems like a great option. And honestly, it might be one that I want to try out. Um, but let's talk about what I use. Uh, I use a cassette toilet. Uh, right now I'm using a Thetford brand cassette toilet. Um, the rig came with a Dometic cassette toilet. And as each cassette toilet, so essentially what a cassette toilet is, it's got a water tank um, up here. You got your little you know, basin or whatever, and you've got your tank at the bottom. So it's two pieces and it can detach. And you take the bottom out and that's what you dump out. Um, so the only thing that I've seen with a cassette toilet is that seal between the top and the bottom, it's not always perfect. Sometimes you'll disconnect the top from the bottom and it won't look very nice in that seal. Now I've never had anything leak out like onto the ground or any disasters, okay? But I will just say the cassette toilet is not the nicest thing to use. Now, even my little Thetford, you can go like 20, 30 times in this. And this is the smallest one you can get. But, what's all that about? Oh, that's in there. Cool. Cool beans. Okay, first impressions. We got the little water sprayer out there. I like that. Better than the Dometic. Anyways, it's a pooper. We'll have to use it and uh, see how we like. Pump there. All right, cool. It's a little guy. It's light. It's a light little guy. This is actually a lot lighter than the Dometic. That's how we release. Aha! This is what I was looking for. This little thing. So I like these little tubes because then you can pour it and you can kind of stay away from it, you know? Um, whereas with this one, take that and you got to be like right there. The cassette toilet isn't perfect. Uh, it's great for my rig. I will say the wrap-on style toilet is the only toilet that we've been talking about that requires some power. Um, the compost toilets do have a fan to vent outside, uh, so they require a little bit of power. Um, so it's always good to have like mobile power in case you wanted to set up an outhouse or something like that. If you're gonna be staying somewhere for weeks at a time, um, so it's always good to have those mobile power options. I'm going to be checking out, you guys know I love my Jackery mobile power stations, but I'm also going to be doing a review of the Max Oak Blue Eddy uh, power station, which is a 150 amp hour powder power station. So stay tuned for that. You could use that with a wrap on toilet outside. This is basically the point I'm trying to make there, but stay tuned for that review. Um, so there's really, like I said, these five ways that you can go outdoors. Um, I think a lot of them have to do with comfort level as well as the space that you have available. Um, and at the end of the day, I kind of want to try out all of these ways. Um, to be honest, most of the time, I go dig a hole. I got my little Walmart toilet seat and I'm, I'm comfortable with that. And I actually like that's way better than a cassette toilet if you've got the space and the privacy. Uh, the time that I used the cassette toilet the most was King of the Hammers. So this is, we were there for four or five days, right? You're in a lake bed with 80,000 other people. There's no trees to go hide behind and dig a hole. The nearest porta potty can be miles away from your camp. So literally, you have to have one of these kind of portable options to be comfortable. Um, I spent a year there in my rooftop tent in the Jeep, and it was it was bad. Uh, I just waited till the morning to do my business, and sometimes that was pretty no fun. Sometimes I was pretty uncomfortable because we'd be partying and eating a bunch. Anyways, it's great to have these mobile options. I wanted to talk to you about what I use um, and show some other people that I've met and their options. So I hope this helped. Uh, drop a comment, let me know what you think, let me know what you what you currently use, why you like it, uh, why you don't. Let me know some thoughts about this. Let's get a little conversation going about your business down there. <laughs> 
because this is an ever kind of evolving thing. Um, and it's something that you need to think about and you need to address if you want to mill, build, if, if you want to live a mobile lifestyle. Oh, and be sure to check the description for some links of these little toilets and gadgets that we talked here about today. Make sure you subscribe here so you don't miss any of this crappy talk from me. And uh, check out some of my other videos. I got tons of rig walk rounds um, with other folks I've met on the road. And uh, the Dodge should be out of the shop here any moment. Until then, I'm going to keep updating you guys with some fun videos like this. So I hope you enjoy. The question always is, are you down to my?